Welcome to Rata Cards. I'm your host, Patrick. This is Dan Grano, Sports Securities. How's it going? How you doing, Dan? Huh? Doing all right. Nice. So tell us what you got today. Uh, so I, I just am talking about one card today. Um, you know, we, we, you and I were discussing it earlier. I, uh, I did a trade, and I picked up a 2015 Topps Tech a Derek Jeter Red Orbital Refractor in the Waves pattern. Uh, so that's it there. These are these are numbered to five, and this one, I, if my memory serves me correct, it's three of five. And uh, I thought it's a pretty cool card. Big name. Oops. And you can see the back there. Um, pretty flashy. You know, I, I wrote about it on my website, and it's kind of it's kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> you know, you look at it, and and then uh, there's like something going on in every direction. So it's pretty cool. You know, so they come in three patterns with the reds, stripes, and then blades, and then the base pattern, I believe. So, so they're three separate to five red orbit parallels. Because in the Jeters, I've only seen the waves right. and the grid. Okay, so you might just double check you know, yeah. by the checklist on those, but Thomas has three separate ones. I have exactly zero yeah. of the red orbit. But, um, you know, I haven't been bidding uh, aggressively on those, so... Well, they, they, they carry quite a premium, I think, in any player, so... I think Jeter does, maybe holds yeah. the higher highest valuation of yeah. the majority of the players in that set. Right, well, I've seen the Maguires go for as high as 500. That's bizarre. Yeah. For a number to five? Which is crazy. That's yeah. just bizarre. Yeah, which is why I don't own one, because I would not actually ever spend that much for a 2015 yeah. product. So, um, I mean, you can get so many more cooler cards. Yeah. You know, autos and, and stuff. Get a lot of ones less. For, for less than that. Yeah. But uh, I, I found it interesting. So I, I was only aware of the two patterns, so you might be correct. There might be three. But I haven't seen a third. Well, good job, man. Thanks. Number to five, Red Orbits. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Is that it? You got others? That's it. All right. So I'll move on to, I have two cards today. Now I got, I got these, um, gosh, I guess, and I think I got the Maris in 2014 and I got the Mantle this year. Um, I, so when I used to live in LA, I used to go to the Long Beach uh, Coin and Stamp Expo at the convention center down there. And um, it's primarily coin and stamp dealers. Mm -hmm. And so I'd always come out. A lot of times I come out empty handed. Empty handed. Right. It's a three day show, and I go like on Saturday, which was usually the last day because I do Thursday, Friday, Saturday shows. And um, I'd be like one or two car dealers there. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the dealers there would be um, like high end, super high end auction houses, like, you know, Memory Lane and um, that caliber of right. auction house. And so I was never able to, you know, uh, uh, buy anything because uh, it's way out of way beyond the scope of my my income But I did find a dealer there that did sell some lower grade stuff more in, in, in my price range. So um, In 2014 I got this uh, 59 Maris and a PSA 5 now uh, It's not a very uh, Uncommon card at all. It's it's a, available any day of the week 24 7 forever on eBay but I, I, I really don't buy a lot of vintage you know people that watch this know I'm a print Thomas collector I you know, the majority of stuff I end up buying is from the 90s. Mm -hmm. But um, this card sort of caught my eye. I just like the color of it. It's a very clear picture. The centering's not terrible. Um, and I just, I just liked it. And I think for the price that I, I paid for it, it was, uh, it was, I thought it was fair. So um, second year Maris. Pretty happy to have it in the collection. And this second one is a uh, 54 Mantle. It's from Bowman. I got this as a birthday present to myself this year. Uh, back in May, just wanted something different, and um, I bought this because I, I the centering is, is gorgeous. It's got incredible eye appeal, and the one thing that makes it a PSA one is the tape marks on the top and bottom. I actually like the tape marks on the top and bottom of this card, just because I think that it it you know, tells a story. You can see that. So that's just those are the two cards that <clears throat> I thought were you know. Uh, notable in my collection i i really don't have a lot of vintage cards uh, i don't i don't actively pursue uh much in the vintage category just because my budget is right. captured elsewhere 
Um, but I foresee at some point down the line, you know, as, as, as things change and I, I mature in my hobby, um, I'll probably buy more vintage. Yeah, it's fun to get into. Yeah, it is. I think that I'm going to be very particular. It's got to be like something that like speaks to me, right. ideal wise. You know, I'm not going to be buying PSA 10s of vintage cards. I'm probably just going to keep it, you know, within reason, just something so I can really enjoy things. See, the thing about vintage is that there's two arguments here. Is you can go, what's most, you know, it's two, two, what's more, more important to you is it, is it condition or the centering? See, to me, it's centering. I'd rather really beat battered, battered up card that's got incredible eye appeal than one that's way off centered and pristine condition. Yeah. That's just me. I don't like mm -hmm. looking at off centered cards though. I think they're hideous. So I'd rather look at a centered beat up card. That's just me. That's just me. It's just an opinion. So um, uh, those are the two cards I thought I'd share with you today. And uh, Dan, do you have anything else to say? I'm good. All right. Till next time, enjoy collecting. Take care.